Distributed file system allows us to replicate data from one server to another for high availability. Now, this is not the same as clustering. We're not installing the failover cluster role, and we're not using shared data storage. I'm going to go from server manager to add roles and features. Click next until I get to the point where it says file and storage services, expand, and then I'm going to choose both options that we see here, DFS namespace, as well as DFS replication. And DFS namespace basically gives you a shared namespace that everyone can use that both or however many servers you have will respond to. The replication replicates the data back and forth between two or more servers. Now, I've had clients that have set this up with one server next to another that gives them high availability in a local office. I've also had clients that have had them spread out over multiple locations. So that way, when a user would open up a file, they would open up the file on the local server rather than going across a slower VPN tunnel to the server that may be in the main office. So it serves a couple of different purposes, one being failover and the other giving faster access to files in other offices. And that data replicates, if we set replication up properly, to each other, and it can do that to multiple servers in your network. Now we need to do the same installation on another server, so I'll go ahead and do that, and when we're done, we'll get started. And the installation has succeeded. I'll click Close, and now I'll go up to Tools and I'll choose DFS Management. I'll expand, and we see two different areas here. We see namespace and replication. As I mentioned earlier, namespace is going to be a shared name that all the different servers that are in DFS will respond to. And then replication will replicate that data. Now, you don't have to do both. You can do one or the other or both. In order to get started, though, we need to have a shared folder. That shared folder has to exist on both servers. So I'm going to right-click, choose New Folder, and I'll just call it Shared. And I'm going to put a text file in there and just call it Test. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other server. I'm just going to create the shared folder. I won't create the test file because I want to confirm that it replicates from this server to the other server after I set that part up. I've set up the shared folder on the other server, and I've also shared the folder as well. I'm going to do that right now on my original server. Go to Properties. Go to the Sharing tab. I'm going to click on Advanced Sharing, but you can do it either way. I'm going to check the box that says Share This Folder. And I'm just going to give full permissions to everyone. Of course, you're probably not going to want to do that in production. You're going to want to lock down to specific people or groups. OK, our folder is shared. And just to confirm it works, I'll put in server 01 and it's the UNC path. And there's my shared folder and my test file. And I'll do the same thing with server 2. And there's server 2. And there is no test file there. Now we're ready to set up DFS, so I'm going to go to where it says Namespaces. I'm going to right-click and choose to create a new namespace. Now it's asking me the name of the server that's going to host that namespace, so I'm going to browse to Server01. And I could pick either server at this point because I can add both servers as namespace servers eventually if I want. And this is the server that's going to serve up that shared name. Now I'm going to choose the name. I'm just going to give it the name DFS, just short for Distributed File System. And then under Edit Settings, I'm going to go to where it says Customize and just make sure everyone has full access. Now, of course, you're going to want to lock that down to specific people or groups. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to keep it wide open. I'll click Next. We want to use the domain-based namespace because all of our servers are members of the domain. If not, we could use the standalone namespace instead. Now, we do want to make sure that the 2008 mode has checked. What this means is, starting in 2008, Microsoft enhanced the ability of DFS. It gave it better scalability as well as access-based enumeration, which is something that allows users who have access to see the shares see them, but those who don't will not be able to see them, which is a nice feature. Now, I'll go ahead and click Create, and we were successful. Now we need to add in those important shared folders. 
So I'm going to right click and choose new folder on our new namespace. I'm going to call this one shared because that's the name of the shared folder, but you don't have to call it that. You can call it anything you want. I'll click add. Now I'm going to click browse. And we can see on server 01, there's my shared folder. You can ignore the DFS. This is actually a level higher than shared. So I'm just going to choose the shared folder. And you can see it's going to server 01 shared. The other one will be server 02 shared. So let's go ahead and add that as well. I'll click Add. And this time I'll browse to server 02. And hit Enter. And I see my shared folder. Click OK. Click OK. And now I see server 01 and server 02 shared. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now it's asking me if I want to set up a replication group. And the answer, of course, is yes. So we're going to replicate the data from one server to the other. First, it has to create a replication group. The wizard appears, and I'm going to leave the defaults as we see here. It's going to show the replication group name. So basically what this means is that when you go to access the data, you're going to be using this particular name. And both Server01 and Server02 will recognize that and respond to that name. The replicated folder name, of course, is shared. I'll click Next. And then I'll click Next. Now we have the option for the primary member. It sees both Server 1 and Server 02. You can choose either one and click Next. Now we have the option for the topology. It doesn't show the option to choose the hub and spoke. And that's because I only have the two servers. If I had a third server, then we'd have that option. Otherwise, we have full mesh or no topology. I'm going to choose the full mesh. Click Next. Next, we have the bandwidth option. Now you can see by default, it's going to do full bandwidth. But if you're having issues during the daytime, then you can certainly change this to something lower. And then you can choose replication during a schedule if you'd like as well. Here's the edit schedule. You can fill that in and what speed you'd like during that time frame. So we have lots of different options that we could do. I'm just going to choose full bandwidth and no schedule. And as long as everything looks good, I'll click Create. And that looks great. I'll click Close. And here's a warning that says that there may be a few minutes before replication starts to work. And that's fine. We'll click OK. Now let's take a look at our work. Here we have Server01. And in Server01, we see our test file. I'm going to open up another folder, do server02, and then we'll do our replication name. There's server02 with our shared. And then we'll open up a third one. And this is going to be the one that everyone gets mapped to. So you can have a drive letter mapped to it if you want, or they can just use the UNC path. So what I did is I put in backslash, backslash, and the domain name, backslash DFS, and we see our shared folder. And I click Enter. Now, it shows that there's no data in it. That means that this server is accessing the data on server 2. If it was accessing on server 1, then we would see that test file right in this box. However, if we just give this a few minutes, the data is going to replicate from server 01 to server 02, and we'll see it in our shared namespace here. And after just a few minutes, there it is. We see test in both locations, and we see it in our shared location as well. And what the server will do is it will pick up whichever server is responding the fastest, and that could be based on the CPU load. It could be based on the location as well. So that is setting up distributed file system on a Windows server.